Hi, we're the Huge Movie Fanatics here to review Iron Man 3. Uh, yes, that's the uh, the Iron Man stance, as it were. Um, and this is my biggest disappointment of the year, by far. Um, the movie was... It was fine, at best. Uh, I... I have a lot of problems with this movie. Uh, oh shit! Keep it short. Uh, <laughs> well, let's just uh, the biggest problem, besides the villain, uh, I'll get to him in a moment. This will also be a, a spoiler-laden spoiler-laden review. My biggest problem with the movie is the tone. It's completely different, and it completely shatters the tone that the previous two Iron Man movies were made. Uh, and you can even throw in the Avengers into that. But also the complete, uh, completely different in tone to w the way the other um, Marvel movies have been made. Really? How so? The uh, and the switch up comes from the directors, the switch in directors. Um, this one acts as like a Tom Clancy thriller. It's much more of like a, a straightforward thriller storyline, which I don't necessarily think is the best way to tackle a Iron Man movie. Um, but and, and it's not it, like. The thing is, okay, so John Favreau made the first two movies, and he had them, he did them in a way that nobody had ever done a big summer blockbuster before. He did it like Robert Altman directs. He did it through improvisation. He had a script, and the script uh, was just sort of the guide, but he let the actors completely act and interact, and uh, the dialogue was super snappy and uh, uh, layered on top of each other, and like it was just fantastic because of that. Um, and uh, that's why the first Iron Man works so well. Uh, the Iron Man 2, to a, to a lesser extent, works well because of that as well. Um, but this movie felt so scripted. Like, there wasn't any for form of naturalism that seemed to come out through the, uh, the characterization of any of the characters. Um, and I, I just don't feel like Shane Black captured who any of the characters were outside of Tony in the first half of the movie. Um, the stuff that really, really freaking worked well was his post-traumatic stress he got from the end of the Avengers. I mean, he died at the end of that movie. And oh, yeah. he is dealing with the fact that he died to save the world and he's now living in a world where there are aliens, where there are monsters, where there are gods. And he has to... He's a normal human being. And that really messes up with your psyche. He's not like the other ones. And that's what made him so disturbed. Um, and I thought that stuff was great. It ultimately, it doesn't really go anywhere. But um, that stuff I really, really liked. Um, and the thing is, is like if you watch it in with in league with the other Iron Man movies and the Marvel Universe movies, it doesn't really work. If you watch it with Shane Black's movies, as like <laughs> uh, Lethal Weapon, Last Action Hero, uh, Long Kiss Goodbye, uh, or is it Goodnight? Um, and uh, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. It's a great Shane Black movie. Like I mean, this is totally a Shane Black movie from top to bottom, and like it works in that respect. But I have to watch it as an Iron Man movie, where it doesn't really work. Um, so that's my, my biggest problem. And then, on top of that, you have the Mandarin. Now, that it was the com biggest fuck-up I've ever seen for a superhero movie bad guy. Because, and, and like, ben, ben Kingsley is the best thing about this movie, I, I will say that. He's just fantastic. Um, and I would have loved him to be the Mandarin, but they do a Batman Begins, and no, 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 he's not the bad, he's not the bad guy, the, the actual bad guy is this Aldrich Killian, who's like a no-name, who's in like one issue of the comic books, um, much like Ducard was in Batman Begins. That said, they captured the character of Ra's al Ghul in Batman Begins, he still maintained that character, whereas this, they just had the name the Mandarin, who is Tony Stark's like biggest opponent in the comic books. Um, so as a comic book reader, they fucked him up as bad as they fucked up Venom in Spider-Man 3, or Deadpool in X-Men Wolverine. Like, my god, it was just a complete trashing. And here's the thing, though. At the end of The Avengers, they reveal Thanos to be the big guy, the bad guy for Phase 2 of the Marvel Universe. Thanos. And he has a connection to the Mandarin. The Mandarin, the whole thing with the Mandarin is the Ten Rings, and you, every time the Mandarin comes on screen you see Ten Rings, but that's the only thing they mention of the Ten Rings. But one of the rings is a ring of power, one of the five stones of Thanos. Thanos has five stones, the first of which is the Blue Stone that uh, can take over, like, mind control, which is what Loki uses with his little pokey stick. Yeah. 
And in the the second one is the Ring of Power, which uh, it, it allows the wearer to do sorcery, which in the comic books is what the Mandarin did. So I was like, oh, so they revealed Thanos. Makes sense. Then the next villain is going to be the Mandarin. No, no connection there uh, at all. Which I was like, that's weird. Like, why wouldn't you connect the two together? Like, it's almost as if it's completely dissimilar. But then the biggest thing is he's. You see the Ten Rings. He's the terrorist behind the Ten Rings, right? The Ten Rings in the first movie are the people, the terrorist organization that put the shrapnel in Tony Stark's chest. Yeah. They make no connection to that in this movie. Like he's in, ultimately responsible for making his own worst enemy, Tony Stark. Yeah. They don't even. They're nothing. No mention. Like, come on, seriously. And I'm sure this is why uh, John Favreau decided not to direct the movie because he he wanted to. He even shot the Mandarin for the first movie, um, and then he cut him up. He'd always wanted to do the Mandarin. The whole point was a build up to the Mandarin, and I'm sure he was just kind of like, all right, fine. I'm not gonna make it. I'll be in it, and I liked that he was in it um, as Happy Hogan. But I don't know. All that just really <laughs> irked me. <laughs> and, 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 like they completely screwed him up. And he's supposed to be just as intelligent as Tony Stark, creating his own uh, suits to battle Stark and stuff like that. None of that's in the movie. Um, and then, furthermore, you have uh, uh, the biggest problem with the movie is the shrapnel. In his chest, they, they, well, he's like, and then I should have done what I did a long, uh, or I should have done a long time ago. Uh, what I, I should have, yeah, and he just puts a magnet up there, like, and then ding, 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 <laughs> the end, completely negating what they say in the first movie, where the the guy who builds the arc reactor helps him build the arc reactor in his chest, he's like. You're gonna be wearing that for the rest of your life. That's that's a burden you're gonna have to carry. Iron Man two. The entire plot of Iron Man 2 is that he's being poisoned to death by the arc reactor that's in his chest, so much so that he has to enlist the help of Nick Fury to create his own element to save himself well, from the poison. That thing powered the suit, too, or something. It does power the suit, so... yeah. And then, thirdly, in the Avengers, he has that beautiful moment with um, the Hulk in uh, when they're on the battle station thing, and he... Uh, the Hulk is lamenting the fact that he's not like anybody else, and Tony Stark's like, I have this thing. This thing runs my heart. This thing is... But it doesn't define who I am. I know that I have shrapnel that's going into, uh, into my heart that would kill me today. That, that was such a great element about Tony Stark that at the end of this one, it just... <laughs> I was just like, okay. But, okay, so in the comic books, oh. and this is where I thought they were going to do something really cool, unique, and interesting. Whoops. In the comic books, uh, Tony Stark eventually does have the arc reactor removed, and the way he, they save him is that he gets a heart transplant. Uh -huh. And that's something that he ends up having heart problems the rest of his life, because it's not his own heart. I thought the whole idea of this movie was the extremist thing. And in the, in the movie, not in the comics, but in the movie, the extremist was built like new limbs. You see the girl with the leg, you oh, yeah. see, uh, like, it's a weapon, but it could be potentially, it was designed for good. I thought they were going to build him a new heart, and that was like, much like the Iron Man mythos. He's a weapon, but he's going to stop all weapons and terrorists and stuff like that. I thought they were going to do that. He was going to turn a weapon into something that could help him sustain life. And I, uh, I, I was like, that would have been a bold move. It's not where, the, it's not where they went. Um, Beware of part threes of superhero movies. I think it's evidently safe. that's just what the problem is. Um, that said, I mean the action was kind of fine. Uh, <laughs> I liked the I liked the stuff with him and the little boy. Like I thought that stuff was great. Uh, that amused me. Um, I liked Gwyneth Paltrow in the movie. I don't know why they made her like all hot and fire lava y and stuff like that. But, like that was a weird thing to make the extremist thing do. Um, and Aldrich Killian, fuck him, he was a terrible villain. He was completely cardboard. There was no character there. Um, ben Kingsley was amazing uh, as the duplicitous fake Mandarin. Um, and he was just great. I like that he was just like this burnout guy who was just watching football on TV. <laughs> uh, or soccer, as we Americans call it. Um, but, yeah, uh, I'm going to give the movie... I, it, I, I'm complaining about the hardcore. It's really not that bad. I'll give it two and a half. Um, it was fine. It was just a far cry from the previous Marvel movies. By far the worst thing a Marvel Cinematic Universe movie has done. Uh, even worse than the Hulk. Uh, the Incredible Hulk, I should say. Um, so this is 
Iron Man at its worst. <laughs> I, I did like the post credit sequence. Go. What the hell happened in the post? Oh yeah. yeah he meets yeah. the Hulk. And you find out why he's narrating the whole time. Yeah. It bothers me when movies do narration for no reason. And there was narration for no reason until you reveal at the very end why of the credits there's no why there's narration. Then I was like, all right, that'll get a pass. <laughs> but anyway, what did you think? Uh, you know, I, I mentioned about a year ago the super superhero burnout. I mean, yeah. I'm not a big, I'm not a comic book person. You know, I'm a, uh, I don't really care one way or the other. But for me, this was. It, it allowed, you know, I had a problem with the Avengers, you can see the re our review for that, because of just cramming so many characters in, you know, this for me, at least, you know, when I first saw it, or when I, I only saw it once, but when I saw it, and it was first starting, it was like, okay, it's breathing, you know, at least it's, it's, it's breathing, it's introducing this, and it's not crammed full of people, it's just breathing. One thing I felt about the beginning of the movie, with, with you probably will disagree, which is fine, John Favreau and, and him, he was kind of annoying. It, it felt like the trans, the beginning of the movie, Ray, with all that you know, kind yeah. of funny shit, felt like Transformers to oh, me. Oh, good, I can feel that. Oh, good. I'm glad you agree. And I was like, yeah, okay, you know, you're funny, John Favreau. Ha ha ha. You know, get your security badge. And it was really kind of pissing me off. And that was right at the beginning of the movie. Yeah. So, but I remember, you know, that was kind of pissing me off. But I remember liking it, you know feeling like, okay, you know, it's just one superhero now, so we can just, we have time to breathe, but um, <clears throat> the action in these movies, it seems like it's getting, for me, it's getting worse, like almost, well, yeah, every year, where it's just like, the action is just, I don't know, I, I'm not a big, like, hand-to-hand -hand combat kind of person, and it, it, it just, it, it's just, I don't know. It's, <laughs> it's just, the action in this was the worst. The of, action uh, in this series kind of shitty, and like the ending, you know, it was just so, like to me, you know, I'm not an ADHD kid. I'm a, like a, you know, aging guy without. I don't think I, you know, whatever. You know, I like boring movies. <laughs> so, so when I see something like this, that's completely like, like, you couldn't even see what the suits looked like. <laughs> I couldn't see it was anything. It was like. The ending of the movie at the, at the whatever, the dock, the, the, the shipyard, whatever, whatever. The same shipyard from Lethal Weapon 2, presumably. Yeah. <laughs> or, or Double Impact. <laughs> Is, it was like Transformers Iron Man ending. And it was like we have a hundred suits flying around. Who knows if Tony's in one of them or not. Oh, he was in that one. Now he's in the... It's just like... It's tailored. The ending is tailored for a 14, 13 year old ADHD kid. And I, I'm not, I can't follow it. And I, I, because I can't follow it, I can't enjoy it. It's loud, it's moving fast. So what? Yeah, exactly. And like, some people who criticized the, the Avengers was that the action was like just so grandiose at the end that like. Well, you have you, said that you can follow. You can follow it. But people also compared it to the ending of Transformers 3. Nobody's comparing this Which to the I Transformers am. one. Well, I, I like, you are, but like, how come nobody else is? This is exactly <laughs> the same problem as Transformers movies, is you have robots fighting robots, and, and there's no, know, you can't tell what's going know, on. Each shot lasts two-thirds of a second, and it's like... At least the Avengers, you followed everything. And sure, those serpent things kind of look like the ones from uh, the right, Transformers. The year. Yeah, exactly. But it, <laughs> but it was at least done well. You followed everything. Well, then there was that great shot which sustained, where I think it, we, we went to each character and once sustained yeah, shot exactly. was cool. I just yeah. watched that recently. Yeah. So, like, I mean, this one, you couldn't follow anything about I bet if ending. you got the Blu-ray and slow mode it, you couldn't even follow it. No. <laughs> and one of the weird things is, is like, if you go to the website, you can see all the suits that he built. Yeah. And learn about why he built all of them and whatnot. And like he uh, he built sort of like this heavy weightlifting one, which is similar to the Hulkbuster one in the comic books, which he designed to fight in case he ever had to the Hulk. <laughs> he had one that accepts energy just in case he had to battle Thor. Like you can oh, see right. how fucked up he got from the Avengers and how paranoid. Oh, that would have been great to put into the movie. Right? He built one specifically designed to go into deep space. And you can see it in the movie, it's the one that goes the highest at yeah. a certain point. But you, and you don't know that that's what it is, but it's because he went into space and he fucking died and came oh, back. Oh, right. Down. All that would have been fascinating character elements that he just got so tormented that, like, why, why is that not in the movie? To me, that would have been very cool to... You wouldn't even have had to spend very much time on... Two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's all we ask. <laughs>
Yeah, that's a great idea. God damn it. Like, and, and it's all there. They did it. They just didn't they, show They didn't explain it. They didn't it. explain yeah. it. And that's that's interesting character development for him. And, like, he was kind of... Over, like, he, he gets a, a pass in that his character wasn't similar to how he was before because he had kind of had the post-traumatic well, sure. stress. But that doesn't explain, like, Rhodey. Rhodey was completely, like, one-dimensional. Who's that? Exactly. He's, a, <laughs> he's his best friend, Don Cheadle, from the first two oh, movies. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Who had yeah. perfect characterization in one and two. Different actors, but he, you could tell how it was the same character. In this, he could have been anybody. Like, it felt like Lethal Weapon at the end of the movie. Because you had Tony Stark, who's just being goofy or crazy like Mel Gibson, and then you have the straight the straight edge one like, no, we gotta shoot! And, uh, uh, it just reminded me of Lethal Weapon, uh, specifically Lethal Weapon 2, and the biggest thing that bothers me is Tony Stark seemed dim-witted at times in this. Whereas, like, in the other movies, all three of the previous times we've seen Stark, four times we've seen Stark because he had his little scene in the Hulk. Oh, God. Um, but in every time that you've seen him before, he lets you know he's the smartest person in the room, he lets you know that he's the coolest person in the room, and he makes you look like a fool if you try to defy him. In this, they had that's the horrible scene. Like it made me laugh out loud. It was funny, but it just wasn't right. Like on the dock, where they're both huddled, kind of behind crates, and then he's like, uh, Tony Stark jumps up to see where oh, the villains shit. are. It took a long time to get this. Sorry, right. he jumps up to see where the uh, uh, the villains are, and uh, oh, yeah, Don yeah. Cheadle is uh, just like, how many of them? He's like, I don't know. I, d I jumped up too fast. And it's just like, he, in that same scene, he doesn't know how to use a gun. He freaking made guns. He knows how to use he guns. He made an Iron Man suit. What's this gun? Yeah, like, he doesn't know how to use a gun, and I'm just like, this isn't this isn't right. That's It just, it really bothered me. In closing. In closing. I give it two and a half. We well, didn't say what you Well, that's, <laughs> you said enough for three of us, I think. Uh, I started, and then did you take it over? I, didn't I start reviewing? <laughs> you did. <laughs> <laughs> but you hijacked it. I did. Very briefly, it, it uh, two and a half, uh, it, it turned it, you know, for, it was, it felt like Transformers at the beginning and at the end, and I don't know. I did like the, I, oh, another thing I don't like, but it's, it, it, when you're going to see a movie in May, is, is seeing Christmas lights and hearing Christmas music, oh, because yeah. it's like, we just got out of that. Season, oh, the one that bothers me, and it's like Batman, when I saw when we saw Batman Returns, you know, in the yeah. summer of 92, is like fucking snow, and it's like, I don't want to see snow in, in the summer. <laughs> but anyway, it'll work great when the movie comes out in November, yeah, because then all your little families can, yeah. yeah. But uh, what was I getting at? Oh yeah, I think the, the middle part with, like you said, the kid, and when he, I like that, when, when he... The, the suit didn't work and he had to drag it home and yeah. I thought it was stupid that the kid like has no parents and he's got this little workshop whatever but the, the middle half where he's like in the town or whatever in in the big city Tony Stark is re yeah. is reduced to this normal it person kind of I liked that element of the movie did I say two and a half stars yeah. there's really I mean you covered everything else I, I this is way too long anyway yeah. so is there anything this is the you, movie by the way right, <laughs> is there anything you want to know what I thought about? Um, the, what did you think of the switch up in the villain, like the oh, well, see, I, bait and switch kind of thing? I, I, I hate the I hate seeing terrorists in movies and, and, and hearing the word terrorist because I think all that shit is just like propaganda, like just the whole idea of terrorist in general. And I was actually really impressed from a, a, a an aspect that they actually admitted. And that was very impressive. I don't know anything about the... the, the I, I liked that idea. Like, and I thought that was and, done and well. The, and the thing that, like I say, the thing that's creepy about the idea is there's a good chance that that's true. And I thought that that was ballsy, in a sense, to actually put it in there, but it's also a way to thumb the nose at the people and be like, ha, ha, we're going to put this right out in front of you, ha, ha, you're mm -hmm. not even going to know. But not commenting on the... Uh, Characters, because I don't know anything about the Mandarin. I, I was I was very surprised and impressed with that aspect. And you're right. After Ben Kingsley is revealed, the character that he plays was just stole the whole movie. Yeah, yeah, and like I agree with like that was very clever and whatnot. I just wish they wouldn't have done that in this movie with that specific character. Yeah. I mean, they've that tinkered in the previous movies with, like, Whiplash, uh, the, the Mickey Rourke, Rourke character in the previous movie, uh, was nothing like his character in the comic books. He was much more similar to, uh, what was the Red Scare or something like that. Um, 
He had that character with Whiplash's, like, physique and, and uh, weapons and stuff. But, like, he wasn't disingenuous to either character, really. And, that, like, it, it worked. And uh, even, as I mentioned, Ra's al Ghul in Batman Begins. Is the fact that they took this character and just completely mucked him up so much so that he's never usable again. Like, within this line of storytelling. Until they reboot it. Until they reboot it, which, uh, like, I hope that they do at some point so I can see the Mandarin put on screen <laughs> properly because he's one of the best Marvel villains. Yeah. And nobody would ever know from this movie that he, how interesting and uh, textured his character really is. Um, and it's just kind of disappointing. Same thing with, like, the lizard last year. <laughs> like, he was the lizard, sure, because he looked like him, but his character was essentially that of Norman Osborn, uh, as seen in the previous Superman or Spider-Man movie. Um, like, he was... This is way too long. Yeah, anyway, so... <laughs> two and a half across the board. Thank you very much for watching. Sorry.